Hi, it's Simon and welcome to Make With Notion 2024. Loads of new updates announced uh, just today. As of this moment, we now have Notion Forms, Notion Mail, and a ton of other really exciting little bits and bobs that are gonna make either the quality of life in Notion better for you, or just entirely transform your workflow. So these are all of the details, updates, and information you need to know that are coming to Notion this year and into 2025 with the announcement of Notion Mail. And yes, Ivan Zhao did talk about offline mode. More on that a bit later. The first big bit of information has got to be the release of Notion Forms, particularly for people that might want to run things like help desks, capture contact information or leads maybe on a published website and I've been using it for a kind of idea generator in my uh, content manager and it's particularly nice as a kind of questionnaire in a client portal but a few of us have been using it for a little while now in the beta and I've got to say this is looking really super promising AI will suggest questions based on your database properties. You're able to create yourself a form within a database, an existing one, or you can create a new form and it will add a database to that form. Uh, and of course it will work with all the usual relations. So I'm absolutely baking this into the new LifeOS template that I've released. And if you want to see a demo of that, there is another video on the channel coming very soon. So make sure you get to subscribe to see that. Uh, I'm really enjoying the fact that you can either get submissions anonymously or with the name of the person. So this could actually also be used privately within a workspace for Teams. Or if you wanted to go a little further, you can actually publish it like you would a site and either embed the form into a page, so maybe on a Notion site page or in the Notion page or you know anywhere else, or you can actually just share the link to the page and send people to that. So if you wanted to start putting this on your website and capture information from people into your Notion workspace, you can now do that with forms. So that's the first announcement, but there are so many more we need to cover. We can't go much further without talking about the big announcement, which is Notion Mail. They're finally doing it. It's been in alpha for a little while. I've been having an early play with it and it is super exciting. This is email redesigned in the vibe of a Notion workspace. This is gonna be a game changer for many people. It's gonna seamlessly integrate with Notion and Notion Calendar, but it's got that kind of block-based system. It's gonna allow you to do things like use forward slash commands, drop scheduling buttons that link to Notion Calendar into an email. Notion AI will sort and organize your email in the way that you want it from minimal views through to organizing by priority or focus. But what's really super exciting is there's even gonna be a kind of inbox template gallery, meaning that you can kind of of create custom inboxes for certain things like say your recruitment or your sales uh, inquiries. Now Notion Mail is available in 2025 for general release so we're all waiting for that. Everyone at this conference got early access which is exciting and then there is a, a wait list so I really encourage you to go and sign up to the Notion Mail wait list to give that a go. The other big news on Notion Mail is the way that Notion AI is integrated into it and you can set up auto replies particularly for that kind of granular organization or back and forth that you might often have in email strings. You can give a prompt about how you want the mail system to manage your email. It'll be like prompting a GPT to manage your email, but directly in Notion. So I'm really intrigued to see how that works. My early testing of Notion Mail has got me super excited. And let me know what you would want from a Notion Mail in the comments. And I will, of course, feed it directly back to the Notion Mail people who are clearly listening to the community because it's already improving endlessly. Now at the moment, it will only be connected to Gmail. Now I know a lot of people will be disappointed about that, but let's be honest, they've built an entire email system here. This is the people that used to run Skiff that got acquired by Notion, and it's really exciting what they're doing. So they'll start with Gmail, and then I think they'll roll it out to have wider access later on, like Outlook and all the rest of it. But yeah, sign up to the waiting list. Notion Mail is here, and it's gonna be great. So I think a lot of you are gonna really enjoy layouts. 
So we now have the option within a database to create a second column, hide organized properties, and even take properties and show their contents on a Notion database page. It's basically a way to create much more nuanced and kind of controlled looks to pages, particularly within databases. So this is going to mean that you now have a whole sidebar area where you can drop and move certain properties from the top of your page. But what I'm really loving about it is you can then group the properties into areas. So for example, you could have a task management options view, and then you could have a relations view and see those within it. It also allows you to do things like view attached images in sections on the page, much like you might have seen like sections uh, as a view on databases pages at the moment. So I'm really enjoying that. I'm going to be making a video, I think, on how to kind of update that in my templates. So if you use one of my Life OS templates, that's definitely going to be an interesting option to kind of uh, update that template and, and see what it does for the way that you look at information. I've always felt with databases that you have all that info, but when you have to squeeze it up the top, it gets a lot harder to use. I think this is going to be a real quality of life thing. But probably the biggest cheer of the keynote to that point was the announcement of custom emojis. Twitch. Now that does sound like a small thing, but you now have this option within your page and database. You can even drop these as a forward slash into your uh, pages. So you're going to be able to kind of add your own emoji creations, maybe icon creations, and have them available to you already loaded into the site. So I think this is going to be great for creators and template makers, but also people that just want a clean aesthetic, a bit of fun, or maybe brands that want to have a clear brand image right across the workspace. And I will make a video for you Complete Life OS owners if you want to add this feature into the template that you may have downloaded recently. And on that note, make sure you do check out my recent release of my second brain, which probably leads us on to the next big announcement, the new Marketplace. So the big news for template creators or people that like to use and download templates is that the gallery is now becoming a fully-fledged marketplace. We actually saw Ivan's early plans for Notion, which included this really early days, the idea of it, and it's really cool to see it come into fruition. In the last year, we discovered that there are three times as many templates duplicated into people's workspaces. That's almost three million every month. Payments will be managed directly in the template gallery. It's going to allow you to not only buy a template and be guaranteed as a customer that you get a 14-day refund policy on it. But if you do decide to ask for your money back, the Notion system will pull that template back out of your workspace and give it back essentially and return it to the creator. This not only protects customers to get that refund guarantee, but it also protects creators knowing that their work, if shared, can be brought back if it's returned. I'm also really glad to see that they're going to be supporting reviews, testimonials within it, um, and I think we're going to see a real shift in the way that Notion templates are provided to users. Formulas within automation. This is probably the most underutilized feature in Notion, and there's so much potential around automation. So formula support within buttons, formula support within that little uh, logo, that little kind of lightning logo on a database. You can now create, when this happens, do this, formulas. So it means that developers or Notion consultants can really build custom workflows that make a Notion system take over from some of those other systems like, say, Zapier or Make. You can now do it in-house in Notion. I'm really excited about this, and I think it's going to go a really long way in uh, businesses, particularly startups who want that custom solution. I've already been building them into my templates around, you know, buttons that sort certain things out. Maybe if you want to escalate a query from your Notion forms. Pretty cool. We also had a really cool demonstration of Notion AI and where that's been going. And I think what's really exciting about Notion AI is the way that you can now essentially chat, search, analyze, and write right across the system. I'm particularly excited about the way you can now reference and get it to search through attached PDFs or things like if you have Slack connected to your Notion workspace, it will also search through Slack. So Notion AI is becoming increasingly a system that you can use across your whole computer. I think it's going that way. The AI system around helping you write, helping you look through information within pages, and then suggesting outcomes or directions. Notion is really changing gear this year in the way it's helping us with our workflows. So that final bit of news. Now, 
I want to talk about one feature we're not we're not shipping today. Offline mode. Now this has been one of those kind of zeitgeisty things in the Notion community, the idea of will we get offline mode? Now a lot of us, if you go deep into Notion, realize how complex that is to do. But so many people, so many of you guys, tell me all the time, if you could have offline mode, you wouldn't use Notion for your knowledge management, your research, your projects. You know, not being able to use Notion on the plane, it is really annoying. Well, Essentially, Ivan said it's in the works. He essentially said, thank you for your patience. We are working on it. And we have now put offline mode for Notion into alpha. I think it's a way off. I think we're waiting later into 2025 before they even start sharing the alpha. But this is a big step forward for many people in allowing Notion to become your all-in-one workspace and your kind of your knowledge bank, your second brain for storing important information, but particularly trusting it so you can work elsewhere. It's complex, right? Because it is essentially a shareable block-based uh, collaborative tool in many ways. So that doesn't suggest it's designed for you to just make something offline and then how do you integrate that back into the system with other updates? But I think this is a really exciting announcement. It's really great that they've recognized that the community want that. Uh, so I, for one, am super intrigued to see where offline mode goes. So no more questions about offline mode. We have an answer. Thank you. So those are the headlines from Make With Notion 2024. Let me know in the comments what you'd hope for, what you'd like to see in the future from Notion. And if you want to go further with your Notion workspace, make sure you also get over to bettercreating.com or the new Notion template marketplace and search for Better Creating where you'll find all of my new Second Brain Life OS templates. I'm really proud of them. They are the best super powered templates I've created yet whilst keeping them a little bit simplified. For now, if you want a little bit more detail on how you can really make the most of building yourself in Notion, you should watch one of these videos next for some inspiration. Thanks for watching. Hit my face to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.